G'day. Today, I'm converting one of these insect killer devices into an electric mouse trap. Um, I've got some mice running around because of where we live. Um, they come in under the house and they're eating the chicken's food and things. Um, anyway, I've uh, found where they're running through and it's quite a limited space. So, what I'm going to do is convert the insect, the insect killer wand things, you can buy these from anywhere, um, into uh, a plate mousetrap killer thing. Um, now I dare say it's not going to trap them, it's just going to kill them. Um, once it's done that, I'd have to basically clear it off um, and reset it, which is pretty much a case of just pressing the button. Now before I start, make sure your batteries are out and that it's discharged. Um, you can do that by using a screwdriver. If this was intact, you'd run the screwdriver just into it just to short it out. Now, what I've done on this one, um, I've already disabled the auto discharge, which is a small resistor that lives um, directly underneath the capacitor that gets charged up so that you don't have to continually hold the button for uh, it to charge. Um, otherwise, you'd press it, it'd char to charge it up and let it go in a discharge within about two or three seconds, which is a bit pointless. Um, they do it for safety, but we don't want safety here, we want death. So, <clears throat> what we're going to need, I converted one of these, this is the handle off the zapper racket thing. Um, I've already installed um, some copper tape onto the circuit board internally, um, across where the capacitor is. Um, when you remove the racket top, you'll actually see where the wires run through. Um, basically remove those from the board and then just tape your copper, copper tape onto those pads. Now we'll also need some aluminium foil, or we call it alfoil, um, and a piece of glass. I tried this with wood, doesn't work, it just hisses. The wood's, um, the, the liquid in the, or the moisture in the wood's conductive, so you can actually hear it um, go through its process and discharge as a Kind of like a, not a Tesla thing, but anyway, you, you hear it sort of do a zappy zappy thing and off it goes. Um, you'll also, you don't have to use copper tape, you can use, um, you can just bring the wires out from the handle straight onto it, but I think the copper tape's a bit more elegant, maybe. Um, I mean, I'm not exactly um, good at this stuff, I just get it done. Um, so what we'll do, we'll start off with our aluminium foil. We want to, now I'm going to do this as one, two, three strips. You can do it vertically, horizontal, it doesn't matter. Maybe thinner strips if you want to. Um, but just for simplicity reasons, I'm doing three strips to, as the mouse runs through, because it actually runs under a door. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have this next to where the entry point is in the door. So they run across, step on the first one, bridge out the second one, that'll take them out. If they're quick enough and they jump over, they'll land between the second and third one if we're lucky, and that'll take them out. Um, now, I have taken mice out before with an electric vent zapper, um, and it generally takes, with the fence zappers, it usually takes two or three zaps to properly kill them. Um, now, these are actually a bit stronger. They work at a much higher voltage, I believe. So, I'm kind of hoping that it does the job and just knocks them completely out. Um, oddly enough, my chickens seem to like the, like mice. Um, if they can catch them, um, they will eat them. They're feral, they're <laughs> doing that, but yeah, they, they do like the taste of chicken, uh, taste of mice. Um, probably payback for eating their bloody food. So, we've got our, keep going through our strips. Now, there's no kind of, well, from what I can gather, there's no real method to this, it's just make your strips and get it done. So, make them a little bit thicker because of the voltages, uh, voltages involved, um, having it a little bit thicker might make um, the current transfer just that little bit more positive sort of thing. Now, I do need, to, I do want to leave a gap on one side to support the handle because I kind of want it chilling in there somewhere. 
Um, now, how are we going for spacing? Now, the, the spacing on the unit, this thing here, um, the spacing is a pro about it's about a centimetre front to back. So there's about 5 mil spacing between the outer grid and the inner grid, and then again from the inner grid to the outer grid, uh, the other outer grid. So, get rid of him. Now, that's probably too big, so I'm just going to... The inner one I want a little bit shorter as well, just because I want it, I need to bridge between the first and third one. So, so just... Kind of like that, kind of like that. Get my third electrode. Conductor, whatever you want to call it. Oops, kind of ripped that one. That doesn't matter. To the rough and ready install. Excuse the noise, you can probably hear my neighbours uh, doing mowing at the moment. Not the best time to be making videos while they're busy, but that's alright. I almost had this working, ready to install on the wood until I realised it wasn't going to work and I needed glass. Um, and then I thought, well, <laughs> doing it again, I might as well go get the camera and we'll make a video about it. Because surely I'm not the only one with mouse problems. So, good to show how this is done and you might be able to duplicate it yourself. Alright, so next step is we need to lock that in place and I'm just going to cheat. I could probably get the clag from upstairs, it's like a, um, it's kind of a wheat based clue that you kids use in, uh, in preschool and things like that because it's, well, kids eat glue and it's perfectly edible, edible as long as you don't have a wheat allergy. Which I didn't think was a, an issue until I read it on the side of the pack, package of the uh, clad glue that says, um, you know, has a warning there for people with allergies to maybe not eat it. Not that you're supposed to eat glue anyway, but, you know, weird things that you get warning messages for. There we go. Not tape nice and down there. I just want to. I am actually going to bring that across the top of it like that. Now this is where your copper tape comes into it. Here's a piece I broke off earlier. This is what copper tape is. It's basically a copper strip rolled up with an adhesive on the back, which is funny enough electrically conductive. The adhesive is so. Yeah, be interested to know how how much how conductive it is. Probably should run a couple of tests on it. See how it behaves at low at your lower voltages, like battery voltages and things like that. All right, that's just being a twat. Get him off of there. This is where a sharp blade would probably be handy. But I haven't got one at within reach at the moment, so I'll just ignore that. Okay, copper strap. I want to go probably about that long, strip it off. So it's very easy to, do, to work with this stuff. But it likes to curl up on itself. Ooh, my thumb. So, just tape him down over the aluminium. So that's the um, outer electrodes connected to each other electrically. So that's cool. Now this one here, I've, yeah, as I said, I've already attached the copper straps to the electrodes. Now, one of them, which way do I want to do this? Probably that way. So one of them will go to the top electrode. And this one here, just take that paper away. Now this is the bit where you, you don't want this one touching this one underneath. Oops. Yeah, you don't want this one touching this one here, or these two, because then it'll just short out. So get your placement in a good spot. Get him, and if 
it wants to play nice, it should be able to just get that down on there and then just straight onto that metal electrode. Cool. Well, that's pretty much it done. So we do it, we'll do a test, see how it behaves. We're just going to put in the double A's. I'll secure this down once it's all built and ready to go. Probably just clamp it or something. Alright, so charging. Screwdriver. Wow. Do it again. Where's that sparking from? Alright, now we don't trust it because we have a potential charge on it that won't go away. Alright, so we're going to probably wait it out for a minute <laughs> to see what happens. But that was a pretty crazy zap that, so overall it's kind of ready to go except I've got to work out what the, what's not. Um, connecting now because that's currently charged up so now I've got to be bloody careful with it anyway um, see how it goes over the next couple of days once I've worked out where it's zapping out from and um, should be good bye